Let's talk about how to use some of the healing tools to restore an old photograph. Um, and this can be applied to a lot of different things for photography. Um, so some of the healing tools here are the spot healing tool, which is the simplest one. It allows you to just kind of click and it blends the area away and kind of blends the colors that are in the area over the area that you click. Um, so that's a really easy one. You want to make sure that you use your brackets on your keyboard to make this little spot healing tool just a little bit bigger than the spot that you want to heal. So I use my brackets on the keyboard. You can also use this as well. You can change whether the edge is hard or soft up here as well. Um, I don't usually adjust anything up here when I'm doing that. The one underneath it is, it looks almost just like the spot healing tool. It's called the healing brush tool though. It's just a band-aid without any dots around it. Um, this one, if you go and click, it'll give you a little error message and it says you need to alt click to define a source point to be used to repair the image. So what that means is for this one, I need to hover over an area that I want to copy and I want to use as my source. So this area here looks nice and clear. I'm going to hold alt and click in this area. And you can see a little target appears. And what it does is it grabs a sample from that area. And then I'm just going to move my brush to an area that I want to, it to paint that sample. So what it did is it took the color from this area. I hold Alt and I clicked to sample it. And then I, I brought it to another area. When it started painting from the original sample source, like look up here, you can see that little X that's kind of in the original area that I sampled, it's going to kind of follow my brush around if I move my brush. What it's doing is it's taking the area where I originally sampled and it's blending it with the area where I'm painting. So sometimes this can not work if you're going from like a dark area to a light area. So this has no background in it at all. It's a torn piece of the image. So I'm gonna hold Alt, click. Watch when I start to blend there. It didn't really work. It's not really, um, it's kind of blending this color with this color, so it's not dark enough to completely fill it. This Band-Aid tool works best in areas of the same color or tone, and it, it works well, well on the face and things like that because it'll take where you sample, it'll take that color and blend it with the area where you're painting. So it's more of a blending tool. Now the clone stamp is just like that, except the clone stamp will sample an area by holding Alt. So I sampled it, I'm held Alt. Same thing, you can use your brushes, your brackets to make your brushes bigger or smaller. You can change the hardness of the brush and the size up here and the opacity, which I'm gonna change quite a bit here. So if I hold Alt with the clone stamp and click I sample that area, then I move my brush to the area where I want to directly copy where I sampled. So watch, the little X is following my brush and it's laying down in my brush exactly what is underneath the original sample point. So it's copying exactly what's under that little X and placing it where my brush is. Now this can be a problem sometimes because you'll start to get repeated patterns and um, that, that sample point just kind of follows you around. So the key with this is you wanna hold Alt and click and sample often, and you wanna sample areas that are exactly the same color that you need. So this can be take a little practice. You also really, I like a soft brush so that it really blends. Now, in an area like this, where there's a large chunk that I need to fill in, um, you know, I would have to sample often. I want to zoom in and out to make sure it's not looking funny. Um, so I could go in and fill this all in. Or there's one other tool underneath these Band-Aid tools. There's something called the patch tool. This is a really quick way to blend different areas. So sometimes, you know, if the area is too different in color, it might not work great, but you can try it out. So with the patch tool, you click and select and drag around an area, it will select it. So anytime you see these dashing little sparkly lines, that means this is selected. I am gonna click and pull this area, drag this area with my mouse to an area that um, is clean that I want it to blend it with. So like up here. 
So it's blending it. It is taking the original white and kind of blending it into it. So sometimes like I'll just do it a few times. See how it's just very subtle on the side here. Um, so I'll take areas like this though, and it does a nice job blending it. And I'll just kind of go in to try to fill areas. It's great for like little areas like this too. Um, you wouldn't want to do like up near his head because you're going to end up blending his hair in the edge of that. So as you're working, always have your layers panel open so you can, or I'm sorry, your history panel open so you can step back really easily. Another thing I want to mention, anytime you select something, in order, when you move to another tool, it's still going to stay selected until you deselect it. Or with this um, tool, you can click off of it and it'll deselect. If your other tools aren't working after you've used this tool, it probably means something is still selected and you have to control B to deselect it. You can also go to the select menu at the top and control D. So I could pull around and just see some of these areas if it will blend. It's a lot of trial and error with this stuff. Oops. So you can just move it to an adjacent area that's nice and clear and it'll blend it. So I'm doing with this one a lot of clone stamp filling in. Like this is getting too light here when I use the patch tool. So I'll probably want to clone some of that in. Hold Alt. So your brush size too just depends on how big the area is that you want to fill. Obviously for his face, I'll use a really tiny brush. For these areas, I'm moving around a lot, using a lot of different sources. I'm holding Alt clicking quite a bit. And look at, you can get some weird things happening. Remember, anywhere that little X is where you originally clicked is going to follow you around. So maybe I'll try. You could even zoom out and hold all over here. Now look though, I have to make sure when I go over here that see that little X now is copying the little tear that's at the top. So I really, the key is sample often with this. Hold alt, click, sample often, and sample in an area that's a similar color. I also wanna be careful, my brush is really fuzzy right now. So when I sample, if I get too close to this guy, it's gonna to start to feather over and fade him into the background. But you can see how if you're missing part of a background on any image, it's really easy to fix it or to fill it in with another color. It just takes a little bit of practice. Whoops, sample often. This little menu keeps popping up because I'm clicking too far to the right on my mouse pad. You can see here, look at the little X got over the white part. So now it put that, it, it copied the top of the page. I don't want that, I'm gonna cut that out. So I just control Z a lot. So as I use my clone stamp and I go about kind of covering these areas, once I get close to him, I'm really gonna have to be a little more careful. Um, if you have areas that are looking kind of splotchy, what I like to do is use the clone stamp, but at a lower opacity. So often I will turn the opacity down, meaning it's not gonna fully copy, it's gonna copy where I sample, but it's only gonna replace it at a 50% opacity. So it'll blend it quite well. So watch here, if I hold Alt and click, look at it's still hovering, giving me a preview of my other source. So I have to hold Alt here and that will go away. And I sampled this, but I have a low opacity brush so it's copying it over here, but like just partially. So it will blend things a lot better. So I'm just like, I'm copying, I'm sampling and copying this, but then I have a really low opacity brush. So it's only subtly replacing it. And honestly, in areas like the top corner, sometimes, you know, if you've got a white edge around this picture, just crop it out. So I'm gonna go to my crop tool. I'm gonna just clear out all this because I don't need it to be a certain size. And I'm gonna bring this in and just kind of clean this up. I might rotate it a little. So try, if you need something more subtle, try using a low opacity clone stamp and doing a little at a time. It just helps it blend better. Okay, so now I can see here, Alt, so this is low opacity. See, I have to, it doesn't fully cover when I click. I have to click a few times though, and then it'll bring up the opacity to 100%. But if I leave my opacity a little low, it kind of just blends it a little bit. And my brush is very soft. If my brush were hard, watch what would happen. 
you start to get like a really hard edge. So if you, for the most part, I wanna leave my brush soft for the background. When I get close in tiny areas, I might need to make it a little bit harder. But like here, just wanna make sure the X doesn't go off the top of the page. So I'm, I'm actually holding Alt and clicking quite a bit here. This looks a little dirty up here. I'm just gonna Alt and click there. And you're just gonna clean this up with those tools. Well, over here, I kind of, you can see it picked up his hand when I was cloning before. So I'm going to go back to the clone stamp, hold Alt up here. I'm just going to clone over it. You can see the background's looking much smoother now. Oops. Control Z a couple times if you make a mistake. Well, I keep getting too close to the edge with my original source and my original sample there. I don't want a spot there. I'm going to undo that one. Your history panel can run out real quickly here because it only saves the last like 30 or 50 steps or something. And you're clicking a lot. So I might save as I go along. If you're saving as you go along, then if you make a terrible mistake in the end, <laughs> you can reopen up where you left off. Okay, so now I'm on to the more difficult part of this image, which um, I have to rebuild his face, basically. So I'm still going to go in. So I've tried to clean up a lot of the little specks that are really obvious. If you zoom too far into this image, you're going to find a lot of little specks. So just zoom out and just get the ones that you can see that are really evident and kind of distracting. So it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Okay, so once I've got this cleaned up, now I have to start the difficult part of the image, which is pretty much reconstructing his face. So I have to kind of think in terms of a painter here because some of this is missing. So this is where it gets kind of tricky. <laughs> I am going to use my clone stamp and try to rebuild some parts of his face. So right now it's sampling from where I originally had held alt, so it's looking kind of strange. I'm gonna make my brush very tiny and zoom in. That's key here. Um, I am using my brackets on my keyboard to make my brush really small. And um, I'm on the clone stamp. Right now, my opacity is turned down. So I have, um, it's not gonna be a super strong brush. I might have to click several times to get it to be full strength. But I like that because it blends a lot better when I do that. I also have a fuzzy edged brush because I don't wanna leave a hard edge. It's more obvious and doesn't blend. So I'm looking at his face. Let's start at his nose. I have to kind of rebuild some of it because it's just this white paper. So if I look at the shadows, I want to sample from the shadow areas to fill in where I think there would be shadow. And I want to sample from highlighted areas like here on the little bulb of his nose and fill this area in. I don't want to like sample from the shadow and put it in an area that would be light. So I have to pay attention to where these fall and I'm going to sample often. So here, let's start actually down below his nose. I'm going to hold Alt and click to sample. And I'm just going to slowly start to fill this in. Sample again here, it's a little lighter. Alt click, move a little. And now see, it's not fully covering the white until I click a few times because I have my opacity turned down. But that just helps it blend better. Sample over here, oops. Sample here, click, and fill in this. So it's a little bit patchy here that you can see some of the lines. I'm gonna sample here again, hold alt click, let off my mouse and move a little further away from my brush and just try to smooth that out. 
Now I want to make sure I don't get rid of the shadows, like the crease of his mouth. Sample right here in the dark area, and I'm going to clean these up. I could probably use my spot healing tool here as well. So some of this stuff I might be able to clean up with my spot healing tool. Okay, the nose. Let's just keep working our way up, sampling little bits. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger because it was kind of leaving these little streaks. So here, it's just a lot of practice. Okay, I'm going to save this or control S because I want to be able to come back to this area. I want to show you one more trick with this. I'm getting to these really difficult parts that could really, I'm practicing and it could really ruin my picture. And it's hard to step back because it only steps back so many spots. So one trick that I do is I create a duplicate layer so that my background image is still there if I need to start over in certain spots. So what I'm going to do, if you press Control J, this is just a little trick, it's going to put the same picture on top of the same picture. And so this one, as it is now, is there and it's saved below it. In case I really mess this up, I can just delete this top layer. So you need to make sure if you do this, you're, you're working on the top layer. But then this layer will just remain there untouched in case you need to like step back a little bit. So I did it now because I've already done the background and it looks pretty good. So I'm kind of doing it at a point where I'm starting these heavy details. So that's just kind of there as a backup. So I'm going to go in now and get this cheekbone. I'm just following the highlights and the contours of his face. Okay, so I'm looking here. There's a really light area where the bulb of his nose is. And I'm going to hold Alt, sample that. And I have to kind of use my best artistic eye here to rebuild his nose. <laughs> so I'm going to go in the dark area here and click as well. Because I think it would be dark here. Maybe it would kind of curve up. So I'm basically just taking the color. I'm sampling quite a bit. And just going back and forth real close to where I'm working. I'm zooming out to look. It's getting a little flat here. I don't think his nose would come out that far. So I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. Sample right here. Oops. Sample right here. And bring this up. Now with my brush at a low opacity, it's nice because I can do a little at a time. It's just sampling light areas at a time. I'm going to come up here. Bring the shadow of his nose over fill this in this looks a little bright still i'm gonna go here alt oops that looks a little bright hold alt in this darker area click with a light fuzzy brush it is blending it quite nicely i'm gonna come here just gonna fill that in for a sec Come back to the dark. I think that needs to be kind of rounded out. So lots of lots of sampling and lots and lots of blending. So this really helps if you are a good drawer or painter. Because that's essentially what you're doing. So this is like one of the hardest pictures I could have chosen. Hold Alt, and it's just for practice. After doing this, filling in a background <laughs> is going to seem really, really easy. Now, I don't know. I might have lost some definition there. Looking at the planes of the face and the shadows, like where they should fall. It's looking a little better. And when I zoom out, you can really start to see it take shape. I might need to make this a little bit bigger here. I feel like a plastic surgeon. Maybe something like that. It's a little bright there. Now with his eye, alt and click. He's got some lines on his eye right here. So click on the line and look, if you hover over it, it will continue the line if you click next to it. Now my brush is still really low, but see I'm continuing that line because I sampled on it and I moved to the left. So it's taking me a little longer to fill this in because my brush is low. I can go back up and I can turn it up a little more. 
can see it covers it a lot easier. For this eyeball, I got to get in there and you can get up to where you see the pixels. Basically, I need to find the edge of the iris, which is a difficult to see, but it's right here. I'm just going to hold Alt and click. And try to rebuild his eye there. And then this is too white. His eye is actually quite brown. So I could sample here. I could go over here. This is the white of his eye here. I'm just sampling a little area there. You really have to zoom in and out to see what it's looking like. Sample the dark for the crease here, and I'm continuing it up. Now this little white area right here might be a reflection, so I might leave that. I'm gonna zoom out. See, it is starting to fill in. It looked kind of funky up close, but when you zoom out, it looks much better. And then you can go in with your little band-aid tool. See this band-aid tool though, it did kind of blend it a little bit strangely. It's leaving kind of blobs. So I'm gonna go back with my clone stamp and clean those up. So the clone stamp is way more precise. So here I changed my brush to a little bit harder edge here so I could get a less fuzzy line and a more sharper line around his head. So I might have to go back though, make it a little more fuzzy when I go on his hair. Here I'm just going to try to find the highlighted areas, the darker areas, and try my best to fill them in.
in the end, if you feel like you need to do a bit more blending, I've got some kind of harsh edges, this is a great time to either use a low opacity, really fuzzy clone stamp, or I can go back to um, this healing brush tool. You can try the spot healing tool, but the healing brush without the little dots around the Band-Aid, um, that does a really nice job. I'm going to make the softness a little more on that. Of It takes, you sample for this one, remember? It takes the color, and then it blends it with the area that you paint. So it's sample, and it's blending with, with it with what already is there. So it's it's a little more subtle and it blends a little better. So I like to go back through and blend areas with this Band-Aid tool when I'm done. So I've got a sample and blend it with areas. And you can see there's some areas where it's just like the pattern got a little bit blotchy or repetitive. So this tool will help kind of blend things a bit more. And just changing the brush size a lot, guys, as you're working with your clone stamp, sampling a ton, and just continuing to blend. Now, I could go a little more. There's lots of little white dots and stuff like that. I could go back now with my spot healing tool and clean up some of those and blend some of these areas a bit more. I just have to be really careful along the edges when I do that. And I think I want to clean up this. Let's see. There's that white dot here. So this does take a lot of practice. I don't expect it to be perfect by any means. But when you're done, you know, zoom in and out, control minus, control plus quite a bit, and just see how it looks. Looks pretty good. If I go in my history, look at this is before. Scroll down to the bottom. This is after. And it looks a little bit, the shadows are a little off. But like I said, this was like a really difficult one. So I am not expecting yours to be perfect. Like I see a little bit of a line here. I can try to blend away. His nose looks a little bit flat. So I can go back in and try to fix some of these areas. Maybe add in. That looks a little better. Extend this shadow a little. But it's nice to be able to use a variety of these tools right in here. I don't know what the pattern stamp tool is. You can look into that if you want, but I don't use that one. Make sure you're on just the plain clone stamp. Make sure you know which tool you're on. So these ones are different. One, you, This one you have to take a sample with. This one, it does a selection. And if you do a selection, you drag it to another area to blend it. But when you're done, if it that is still selected, you have to go to select and deselect, or you have to control D to deselect it, or click off the page and it will um, it will deselect it as well. A lot of control Z to step back as well. It just takes a lot, a lot of revision. So when you feel like you're done, you can go back into your layers and you can see if I turn this top layer off, this is my unedited version underneath. And I started, I added a duplicate layer when it started to get really tricky around his face. So um, I don't have to, if I, if I totally messed up his face, I could have gone in and just clicked on this top layer, deleted it, and then added a duplicate layer, control J, and start again. And that way I don't have to redo the background if I mess up on the face. So sometimes you can add layers, you can duplicate your project, add layers from different area, different um, sequences of progression. Like, so if you're getting to a difficult point, you might want to stop and go, hey, maybe I should make a duplicate layer so that I can kind of save what I've done so far in the layer below it. So you could always go Control J, it'll make a duplicate layer, layer, make sure you're on the correct layer and you know what layer you're on. So now I can go on and make all these changes. And um, I don't have to start all over if I need to. So it's just a way to work and preserve some of your work. So I'm happy with this though. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file, especially if you're in the middle of working on this and you need to come back to it. That will save your layers. Um, your history will disappear after you close the file, but you can come back and your layers will be there. Um, but if you 
are done completely, you'll save this, hit OK, save it as a Photoshop file, and then you'll have to save it again as a JPEG because the JPEG is the photo file that your website can read. It's highly recognizable. The JPEG will flatten your layers, though. It'll get rid of the layers. You, if you go back in, you won't see your layers. It's just going to be one layer. So you can't like step back and undo this and start over. You'd have to start from the beginning. So save as a Photoshop file if you're in progress, still working. But then when you're completely done, you can save as a JPEG. That way you can see it on any computer, on your phone, on your website. It's just a photo file. It's not a specialized file that needs a special program.